Hi, this is Walter Weesey with Yellowstone Country Fly Fishing and Parks Fly Shop with my fly tying video for May 20th, 2020. Last week I did a bluegill fly, the week before that I did a bass slash pike fly um, leaning towards bass, and so this week I figured I'd do, for the last of these warm water videos, I'd do a uh, pike slash bass fly leaning towards pike. And this is a Barry Reynolds pike fly, uh, it's a very simple pike bunny. Um, pike flies have gotten a lot more complicated, this is kind of the first generation pikes, pike flies uh, yeah, that came out in the 90s, I think. Um, you know, when people really first got serious about fly fishing for pike. And, uh, you know, you can get a lot more complicated than this. Montana pike tend to be pretty small, and so uh, I want something that's got crossover appeal to bass, and also something relatively easy to tie. The hook there is going to be a number two Mustad 3366, which is an old hook. Um, I've just had a bunch of these. They don't make this hook anymore. It's just your standard clouser hook. And this is actually about as small as you ever want to tie this fly. Um, you know, if you've got big pike where you are, um, you know, you can go up to as, as big as three or four aught. So much, much bigger than this. But like I said, most of our pike are small. Uh, you know, a two footer is a big one. And, uh, and then, in all honesty, a lot of the time the bass are heavier than the pike. They're not longer, of course, but they're heavier. Um, and this is kind of a variation on the, the Barry Reynolds pattern, actually, because I'm using some different eyes here and things. Um, but uh, anyway, so what I've got are some clear cure eyes here. And this color is called Angel, and it's quarter inch. And this is a barbell eye that weighs nothing. So it's, a, it's I guess, a monofilament core probably there, uh, plastic. And uh, so these, these are not going to flip over the fly. And uh, so I'm going to tie those in here. And the reason I'm using these rather than just a pair of doll eyes is that I do want to stay as far back from the uh, front of the hook there as I am. Um, I was a little too far back there to start with. And so I tie these suckers in rather than just putting a stick on eyes to avoid creeping towards the eye of the hook, so to speak. And the reason I'm tying these in so far back, and really the, the major difference, you know, if there is a difference, between this and something like a basic bunny leech, uh, you know, kind of standard bunny streamer, is that uh, I'm tying it far back from the eye, and that's that's because the pike is going to hit it like this, broadside, aiming at the eyes and then the gills, and so it's going to hopefully not get the eye of the hook there, and of course the leader coming off of that. Now, if I'm del if I'm specifically fishing for pike, I am going to use a wire leader um, or at least something really really heavy, you know, like 20 pound maxima, but you know, if I'm thinking that the bass are going to be a little spookier than that, I might not want to use something that heavy. And so something that's going to cut down on that snip, uh, that pike, that kind of classic pike snip, is kind of important. So my flash on this fly is going to be kind of a sea green polar flash. And I don't know how well this will show up in the video, but it's got pearl highlights, it's got gold highlights. And so I've got a lot of different kind of flash coming off of one material here. So it cuts down on the, the tying time. Um, I'm going to gather a pretty good hunk of that. Um, I'm not, you know, I don't count strands of flash on something like this really, but you know, about like that on a two. And you could use flash boo, you could use crystal flash, you know, whatever you like. And what I'm going to do there then is just cut off a bunch of that. Um, so I've got that length of material and then just set aside that bundle of fibers that I cut off in the first place because I can still use that. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to do what I did a couple weeks ago. Uh, just uneven those flash fibers at either end and that kind of creates a, a hair style taper, you know, a bucktail style taper. And I'm going to wrap that around my thread and then kind of wrap it around the hook there and just tie that in just ahead of the bend. I may have actually gone a hair too far back with the eyes there, but it, you know, that doesn't really matter. Okay, now the remaining kind of body material on this fly is going to be a tiger barred uh, rabbit, rabbit strip. This is a hairline barred bicolor rabbit strip. You know, you, you could do the same thing with markers if you wanted, but this, again, speeds things up. Part of the reason I like this fly is because it, it's quick. Um, you know, it's, it's got a lot of materials that do double, triple duty, and so you can tie them pretty quickly for something this big. And, 
you know, if because you do lose a lot of these, they do get snipped off by pike. You throw them in the bushes and or in the weeds, and you lose them in the weeds. Uh, and so something quick is good. But I'm gonna take that strip. I never use crosscut rabbit. I'm gonna use this for everything. Um, but I'm gonna take that, and you, know, you can see there the natural way the hair is laying is towards the back of the fly. And I'm actually just gonna take that whole big strip that I cut off. You know, that's a standard full length rabbit strip that I've tied a couple flies with already. And I'm just gonna tie that in right by the tip there on top of that flash. And I kind of did a gathering wrap, so it's, I sort of spread the, the skin around the very top of the hook there, uh, just to prevent, uh, prevent it from spinning, because I don't want that to spin towards the opposite side of the hook there. And then I'm going to take that, and I'm just going to come in here, and you, you, yeah, you'll be able to see this looking at the screen here. I'm going to just come in here, stretch that skin a little bit, and then find where I'm about even, uh, the skin should be about even at the end of the flash, and then just come in here and trim it. And so that's going to leave the, uh, the, the front of that strip ready to tie the next fly. And I, I can certainly get, I think, another tail out of this strip. I might not be able to get another body. But what I'm going to do then to finish this fly is take my strip and then just flip it around and grab the other end of it, the, uh, you know, the, the end it's, it, the hair is naturally laying towards, and I'm just going to brush all that the opposite direction. Like I said, I never use a crosscut strip because I don't want this to lay flat. I want it to poof out. And so what I'll do here is I have that, that end of the strip kind of exposed, and then I'm just going to trim a V-notch in that. And that's where I'm going to tie that in. Again, just kind of right on top of um, what I've already got there. And then I'm going to try to smooth that transition out with thread. And by the way, the thread here is uh, th either 3.0 or 6.0. I think it's 6.0 uh, chartreuse. And, uh, you, you know, obviously match the fly color. You could tie this in innumerable colors, you know, black, all black, all white, uh, black and orange, um, chartreuse and white. You know, you can mix the, the strip colors uh, between the tail and the, and the wing. You could go classic red and white, for example. Um, you know, do what you will. And I'm going to get all the way up there to those mono eyes, and uh, what I'm actually going to do here is super glue all of that. And that's going to help keep things together if pike teeth do start getting into that fly, and uh, it'll, you know, drastically increase that durability. And while that's still wet, I'm going to go ahead and drop my bobbin cradle here, and, uh, and start wrapping. I'm going to wrap that in touching turns. I'm not you know, because I am wrapping that into wet glue, I'm not uh, touching the, I'm not grabbing it and squeezing on it, because if I do that, odds are I'll get some of the fur into the, uh, into the glue, and I don't want that. But anyway, when I get up here, you know, just behind the eyes, and this is where a, a rotary vise is helpful, because depending on where, you're, where you tie in the eyes, you know, you'll finish right behind the eyes, either on the top or the bottom of the hook. Because here, yeah, I'm not going to be able to get another turn on top of the hook there, but I can tie this off on the bottom kind of right up behind those eyes. And what I like to do there, hopefully this is visible, um, is just kind of come in here and then separate out everything, try to get most of the hair um, at that tie-off point going one direction or the other to expose bare skin there, and then just get a couple wraps in. And then now, once I got you know this, the separation established there by a couple of thread wraps, I'll just clip off the uh, the excess and then clean everything up. Okay, now my throat on this fly is going to be again any kind of flash uh, in red, and I happened to grab uh, red acrylic flash here, and. Uh, you could use crystal flash, I think that's what was used on the original pattern. You could use flash you could use whatever you want, dubbing. Um, and this, I wound up getting a pretty good chunk of it here, and so I'm gonna, I'm not gonna double that back as I usually do. Now that normally wouldn't be all that sturdy, you know, it would tend to pull out if I didn't double it back on itself, but I'm gonna use so much adhesive on the front of this fly that it won't matter. I'm just gonna tie that in so it goes back about to the, the bend of the hook there. Let's get a couple wraps in. Trim the excess there. Obviously just missed one. And you may notice that's actually not very secure, but again, like I said, I'm gonna just lather this thing up with super glue, or with uh, epoxy actually, and so that doesn't much matter. But anyway, I get that tied in, 
and then come in here with my whip finisher. Now, what I would normally do here is I would do a bunch of them to this point, uh, probably add some super glue just to, uh, you know, reinforce things while I let, set that aside. But what I'm actually going to do is show you the adhesives I'm going to use on this. So I'm going to go first with a thin or thick loon, um, you know, something that's that's going to hold its shape pretty well. I don't like using thick myself, and so I'm going to use a couple layers of thin. So I'm just going to go in here and uh, go pretty hardcore here. I'm going to just really go around those eyes. This is another advantage of using this style eye. Um, you know, a, a stick-on kind of eye is going to be uh, less durable no matter what, whereas this I've got just all that adhesive. Uh, you know, all over in there, and so that's going to uh, really anchor those eyes in, even if it's getting chewed on by a pike. I finally got an Infinity Light from Loon, and I uh, I strongly suggest you get one too. They work a lot faster, uh, a lot more powerful light, and it's actually a UV, or I'm sorry, it's a USB charge, and so it's I never have to worry about uh, replacing the battery. But I'm just gonna kind of, I'm just kind of making sure I get all that uh, pretty well set, and, then, and it will still be tacky. I've got two more adhesives I'm going to put on. Um, you know, surface will be tacky. But you know, you'll, your first layer, like on this one, um, that first layer really kind of soaked up bottom half of the fly. So the next layer I'm going to do, I'm going to really make a point of getting it on the uh, on the upper end of the fly. So I'm just going to actually hold it like that. Uh, to make sure it kind of runs to the bottom end of that fly and then zap it again with my death ray. I mean, one advantage of not using this style eye is that the eyes would be closer to the body of the fly. However, I really doubt the fish are going to care about that. You know, if the eyes were an eighth of an inch or a, a you know, quarter inch further back. I think if the fish are that spooky towards uh, where the eye placement is on the fly, we're probably in trouble no matter what. All right. And then my final adhesive on this fly is just going to be some uh, some head cement over the top, and that's going to take that tackiness off the uh, the uh, clear cure. Or I mean, the uh, the loon UV cure. You could also use rubbing alcohol for this, but uh, you know, I've got head cement always on my. Uh, my bench, and so you know that's what I'm going to use. All right, so there you have it. That's just a basic uh, Barry Reynolds Pike Bunny, kind of a small pike pattern. Probably work for you know um, pickerel or something like that too. Uh, but you know it's kind of a pike and bass crossover pattern, and hopefully the fish are going to grab it like this and uh, not get the the uh, tippet coming off the front of that fly. As always, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next week, and I should have a, a conventional trout fly again next week.